Hello, builders. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're listening to this, whenever you're listening to this, we're excited to have you as a listener. We're grateful for any new listeners that are joining us for the first time today. Welcome aboard, and we're grateful also for those who are returning members of our team. So thanks for listening to the podcast. As always, here at the Build Your Success podcast, we like to build you so you can build others. We do that with our corporate training, coaching, and our events and workshops. So that's what we do to help other teams grow and develop. But we also do that with these special guests we have here. And I'm grateful today to have Steve Gutzler. Steve is the president of Leadership Quest. It's a Seattle-based leadership development company. Steve is a dynamic, highly sought-after speaker who has delivered over 2,500 presentations to a who's who list of clients, including, now wait for this, Spotify, Seattle Seahawks, LinkedIn, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Starbucks, if that's not enough, let's keep going here. Boeing, Cisco, Starwood Corporation, U.S. Security Administration, and Oxford Financial, just to name a few. Boy, that's the who's who's list for real, Steve. So thank, thanks for telling <laughs> us about that. And then share some of that with our listeners, what, you know, what, what you've done at these, these fortune companies. Oh, wow. Well, it's great. First of all, great to be with you, Brian. I think, you know, it's so interesting living in Seattle. We're in such a great marketplace. And I've always said I've built my business the good old fashioned way, one relationship at a time. And once you earn trust, once I think you bring value to individuals and or companies, the word gets out there and that's going to be your greatest advertisement. So uh, I always tell leaders, entrepreneurs, don't uh, don't try to make these big quantum leaps. Really be strategic about two or three relationships you want to build and uh, see where that leads. That is wonderful, Steve. And I, I'd like to say that proximity has done well for you. And like you said, just making those great relationships in your area and then expanding upon that and going out further. That's it's always a great way to grow and, and, and scale a company. Well, Steve, mm-hmm. we want to ask you the question we ask all of our guests, and that is what does leadership and being a leader mean to Steve Gutzler? Mm, yeah, that's that's a great question. It's the question I always lead in with every workshop and presentation I give because I love to hear what people say about leadership. I believe it's multifaceted. I don't believe leadership is one like a one cut diamond, but I do believe it's built upon three legs of the stool. First and foremost is how you show up and are you a positive influence? I think emotional intelligence as as a leader today is absolutely critical, essential, number one. So I always say, how are you showing up personally on Zoom calls with individuals? What's your emotional exchange? Is it positive? Uh, That's number one. Number two, what about the impact that you're creating? What's that ripple effect of actual impact? What I mean, I mean, bottom line, executional impact that you create as a personal leader, whether you have a title or not. And then the third, which I think is often overlooked, is how are you inspiring people? Not just trying to inspire them. How do you inspire them by how you live and what you model? Uh, People are watching us every single day. They watch us on social media. They watch us in interactions like this. And we have the ability to inspire people. When they come away from us, they're actually going to feel a little bit better about themselves or a little depleted. So I believe inspiration, not just motivation, inspiration is an inside job. And that's what really uh, moves the needle with building teams and having impact. So influence, impact, inspiration is my, um, I guess, how I view leadership, Brian. That is wonderful. It lines up almost perfectly with what you wrote in, in our application here. You said leadership to me isn't so much a position as much as a mindset of being a positive influence, creating positive impact and inspiring others to greatness. So that influence, impact and inspiring is a common theme with what you said there. Uh, I love that fact, as you said, it's multifaceted. I, you know, our, our podcast name is Build Your Success. And I've learned success doesn't mean the same thing for any one person. We, we all have our own identities. You know, we're very unique. And success can mean a, a ton of different things. You know, a lot of people associate it with wealth, but that's not the only part of life that we can be successful in. So I think it's mm-hmm. got a great definition and uniqueness for all of us. You know, your own DNA on success and your own DNA on leadership. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome. Well, you already started off with this, so we're going to we're going to dive into this one. 
you said you don't have to make quantum leaps to create powerful strategic change in your personal leadership. It's more about three degree shifts around specific areas regarding your self-talk, personal vision, and self-awareness. And, and this reminds me, you know, I've been in the construction business for 26 years now, and they would tell us early on, if you're just one degree off, mm. how far that will, you know, in infinity, how far you will really be off on a target or a measurement or those type of things. So I think it's great to recognize, you know, that's the, the negative side of it, but also the positive side. If you just turn three degrees and focus on something, how powerful that can be. So, so unpack that for the listeners today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you explained it really nicely. I think that uh, I grew up in a family where my dad was a goal setter. He had a restaurant and I lived downstairs in an unfinished uh, uh, basement. That's where my bedroom was. And when I would walk downstairs, there was butcher paper. And on the butcher paper, my dad had written all these goals. And that was a great thing as a kid. I didn't really put it all together, but I just grew up with a goal setting family. That's the good news. The bad news is sometimes I would make, I try to make these quantum goals. And I literally would put in my home office, big butcher paper, sticky notes with big goals, big quantum goals. And often those years would be my least successful years. I would get discouraged. I wouldn't make the headway on it. And then working with companies, working one-on-one -on -one with executives, I began to notice something. The truly, like you mentioned, successful people aren't doing these big quantum overreaches, but they're very strategic about what we call the three degree shift. It's like a aircraft carrier. If the commander says three degrees to the right, a 1500 member crew doesn't even feel it. But in 30, 60, 90 days, that aircraft carrier will be possibly in a whole different continent. And I will literally talk to teams and say, what are the three or four strategic shifts that you can make starting today that isn't quantum? And we use, you know, it doesn't have to be that exact three, but we use that as kind of the, the guide. What's that three degree shift that you can make in your mindset? What's the three degree shift that you can make in your personal vision, uh, in your priorities, in your personal health? And over 30, 60, 90 days, man, you will see some significant uh, differences. So uh, my keynote, Full Potential, we give the five shifts, the book that we wrote during the uh, pandemic with my co-author, Mike Acker, Lead With No Fear. We add two more shifts. So we talk about these seven shifts that you can make starting today that in 30, 60, 90 days, you'll be in a whole different direction. That is magnificent. You know, your dad be an example of this impact and this influence that he had on you by having those goals and, and making real. It's like a vision, what we call a vision board today. Your dad mm -hmm. had that. So that's wonderful. I happen to be a private pilot. And, and when we hit headwinds, we have to turn the plane and fly it in a crab motion, you know, off offset so that our ground uh, track is, is correct, even though we may be flying off heading by two or three degrees. And so, and, and, and the second thing, and I have a course that I use, you know, piloting is another great leadership uh, example, but where we have landmarks where, you know, when we're flying along, we have to see where we're going and, and confirm we're on a, the correct track. And so I like to celebrate those. And I think the same thing can be said of these small goals, celebrate mm -hmm. those. Small, when you, when you turn that three degrees and you're on a course celebrate the fact that you're on course or make small inputs to get back on course. Don't over overreact. That's right. That's right. So Steve here in your application and, and for those listening today, if you ever want to be a guest on the podcast, go to our website, buildcs.net, go to the podcast section and fill out the guest application and, and, and we'll consider you for the show. But on Steve's application, he said that emotional intelligence helps leaders to be able to elicit the cooperation of their colleagues lead and motivate teams of people. So I, I like that thought. I highlighted that from the application, but Steve's also said he's willing to offer some real life examples of that. So tell us some real life examples of where people were able to lead and motivate teams. Yeah, I think let, let's start with the baseline foundation of emotional intelligence. It's how you uh, recognize the emotions in yourself and the impact of those emotions on other people. 
So recognizing what are the emotions going on in yourself, I call it your emotional economy. What is that emotional economy and how is that impacting or influencing others? So uh, every single day, we don't just exchange information. We're not just exchanging information here, Brian. We're literally influencing emotions. And often that comes through stories, anecdotes, and, and personal um, uh yeah, personal stories. So I think as a leader, number one, be aware of what is your emotional exchange. That's number one. The number one error I see in leadership is they go to strategy, technology, budgets, goals, hiring, vision, all of these things, but they forget about what they're exchanging emotionally. So the very first competency, as you know, is self-awareness. You've got to be aware of what you're projecting. And I know, Brian, you're a public speaker. I'm a public speaker. I, I was so excited the very first time I got a, a video reel of one of my keynotes. And I really felt like, oh, I can't wait to watch this. I'm pretty sure I nailed this keynote. I can't wait to watch it. And when I watched it, I was horrified because during the course of the keynote, there was big stage, first time I'd been on a stage with big stage lightings. And the whole time I was frowning as I was speaking. And so here I'm giving all of this great, well, what I thought was great content, but all you could see was this frown and like, I lacked likability, if you will. But that was just like a dimmer switch that went on like, wow, my body language is not depicting what I want. So I always tell people, what's your emotion? What are you expressing? And, uh, you know, the positivity, the cynicism, the negativity, or the hope and the resilience, the optimism. So I think number one, lead with emotion is uh, the first thing, Brian. Yeah, and that, that self-awareness you talked about and described and gave that great example of yourself, it, it to recognize it and then do something about it, of course. And, you know, when we learn that uh, communication is, is 95%, 80 to 95, depending on what research you look at, nonverbal. It makes you realize how important our facial gestures are, our hands are, all the expressions we make, you know, raising the eyebrows, all those things are part of communication and not only part, but the vast majority of communication. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about emotional intelligence, unlike your IQ, you can actually increase it. And unlike a lot of technical skills, you can increase it uh, just through self-awareness. Uh, the, the, the second one, if I may, is going to be how you manage. We call it the 17% moments. Harvard did a fascinating research on professionals today, and they found that the, the greater influencers, the managers and leaders that had the greatest impact and influence, didn't just manage the 83% moments when things were relatively smooth, but it was the 17% moments when they were under stress or faced a challenging relationship, the 17%. And so uh, in our programs on emotional intelligence, we give people what I call the emotional body armor to manage, not the 83, you're doing great in the 83, but the 17% moments when you get emotionally hijacked. Understanding that when cortisol hits your system, it literally impacts you for 18 to 20 minutes. And if you can just self-manage those 18 to 20 minutes, when cortisol hijacks your thinking mind and you wanna just do a fight or flight, if you can manage those 18 minutes, which is very interesting, closely tied to the 17%, right? You will outperform the vast majority of personal leaders. But if you get derailed in the 17 minutes, two things are going to happen. Your influence will go down among your peers and your reputation will get diminished. Mm. So if you want to have a strong reputation, whatever field you're in, if you want to have great influence, you have to learn how to manage those high stress, challenging relationship moments. Not the 83. We all do good in the 83. I have a son in law enforcement and what will define a police officer today is what? The 17% moments, how they manage that stressful encounter. A physician, a school teacher, a salesperson that has conflict with a client, 
how you manage the 17 percent is going to define you and uh, it's an art and a science so you got to understand the signs of cortisol you got to figure out hey what goes on when i get hijacked and learn to self-manage that I, I love that thought and those ideas. Those, some of those are new to me, so I'm gonna, I'm definitely taking notes here on this. But you know, one of the things you said that, that I just love to n- understand and realize is there's a time on. You know, it's it's not forever. You don't have these emotions, raw emotions, and uh, the the response for a period. You know, it's it's what you say seven, eighteen minutes. Yeah. And so if you can remember that and think, you know, what I can control this and and wait on my response because too often we respond too quickly. And if we had it to do over again, we would have responded differently. So, so take that time. I like to talk about the power of the pause and, and yes. pause and think, you know, is my response good? And, and maybe even ask the person, I'm, I'm doing some communication trainings and, and conflict resolution. Hey, I need, I need to take a break from this and, and think about how I want to respond to it. And you'd be yeah. amazed. You said it. And, and I love the thought when I think, I just started, started thinking of leaders that we think of them as exceptional leaders because how they responded some huge catastrophe. And, and it's those moments that really shine out and, and make us see what, what a leader is really capable of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned a couple tactics. I'd, I'd like to share that for the listeners. So the first thing that we teach when you get, quote, emotionally hijacked, you get that flame mail and the email response is like, you wanna jump at it or you have something and you wanna text somebody right away or get on the phone or go see them in person. We teach S-O-S-S, S-O-S-S. The first thing we need to do, and it's so simple, but we need to learn how to stop. Rather than to push into that conflict, buy yourself some time. What are you needing to negotiate in those, that you're actually trying to negotiate what? The 18 minutes, and when I say 18 minutes, they can measure cortisol, it's not like a perfect science, but that's when it's most active in your system. And then as you get some time, you might even have, you know, you eat lunch, you give some thought, you go on a walk, your reasoning mind goes back up as your cortisol goes down. And all of a sudden you have more options. All of a sudden you have a different response. And it's not a fight or fight, fight or flight or freeze response. It's a more logical, um, thought out response. So, but the first thing you got to do is stop. The second O is oxygenate and learn the power of breathing. And this isn't just a simple thing that we talk about. I mean, I literally practice this daily, if not weekly, in different encounters. Our World War II pilots, we learned that there was far too much friendly fighting, friendly um, fight, fighting, right? And they were shooting down their own pilots because they were all hijacked. And they taught them to breathe in through their nose, exhale out through their mouth. They didn't even know the the brain science they just knew we got to oxygenate these young pilots and oxygen goes to your brain and your blood and helps neutralize what cortisol the stress hormone cortisol that can hijack you so stop oxygenate learn the power of breathing the next s it's s o s is strength and appreciation and that is a we know that if emotions can get you in trouble emotions can keep you out of trouble and they've done studies on people that whether they practice gratitude prayer appreciation journaling going on a pre i went on a walk this morning with my wife and we were taking in these new we're at a new location we're taking in these new mountain vistas around us and just I mean, we weren't like strategically about it, but just doing these kinds of practices builds appreciation and healthy emotions. So you're not in a halted state, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired (laughs) and quick, quick triggered. Does that make sense, Brian? It does. Yeah. And the last, so strength and appreciation. And then the last S is then seek a solution. Solutions should be last. The first thing we should do is self-manage ourselves. That is awesome. I love that. I always like acronyms. It's usually easy to remember. Uh, so that's good. You know, I, I, I teach a listening class and in that we, we talk about the breathing and, and 
I like I'm, I'm writing down that the cortisol is lowered there, neutralizes because what I you know that when you're when you do the breathing exercise, the studies show that if you're excited and happy, it'll bring you down, and if you're low and you're 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 you know distraught, it'll actually the breathing will bring your your up. So it kind of balances things out when you take time to do those breathing exercises. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. listeners, take note, write that down. That's some great information that you could use in life. Mm-hmm. I like to, I have a little card that I keep at my kitchen island and it says simply this, Steve Gutzler, you're not a machine, you're a human being. You're not a machine, you're a human being, which, mean I, which means I have a body, I have a physical body, I have a emotional makeup and I have a soulful uh, part of me. And I need to honor each part of those. If I'm just focused on my physical or my intellectual, I'm going to miss one third of all of the dynamics that are going on in my life. And emotions are complex. And we have a lot that's hitting us with the news and economics and politics and civil unrest and um, the, 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 the new variants and all of these things actually impact us and are wearing our emotions down. It's like a bucket. It's going lower and lower and lower. We have to be intentional to fill our bucket, our emotional bucket, and be mindful of how we respond to people so we're more honoring of ourselves and being the leader we always wanted to follow. Man, that, that's a lot of information. There's some very good advice. Uh, thank you for that. I'm going to ask you one last question. And uh, that question, is, and you talked about the news and all the things we're facing today. And so this question is really relevant. What advice would you give leaders facing the current seas of uncertainty? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be super honest with you, man. I think we are just getting, it's like we're in a heavy bout, a heavy weight boxing match, 15 rounds. And we thought we were pretty much done with this fight and we're going to come out. And we just found out we're only in round seven um, with this pandemic and different things of uncertainty. And I say we have to double down on our mental fitness, our mental fitness. Now, by that, I mean, honestly, and I mean this with all sincerity, Brian, we have to listen to good podcasts. And I'm not a podcast junkie. I usually listen to one or two a week because I don't want to like uh, gorge myself with good stuff, right? I like to listen and almost meditate on some of the content. And my goal with a podcast is usually just to apply one powerful truth. It's kind of like that three degree. I'm not gonna make quantum, but from this podcast, if every listener could just take one thing, maybe it's the 17% moments, the 18 minutes, the breathing, take one thing, the small ship. The second thing, so I listen and then I'm a, you know, like you, in 1995, I made a commitment. I won't go into it, the whole story, but it was at a personal development conference that they challenged us to read a book a month. And in 1995, I wrote a commitment card to write, read a book a month. And my wife is downstairs. If you want me, I can go down and get her and bring her up here and say, does Steve really read a book a month? And she would say yes, for two reasons. She's my wife and and it supports me, but it's true. I read all the time and I read good books all the time. I'm reading John Gordon's book, The, the Power of Positive Leadership. How can you not read that and take on your day? Mark Sandberg's book, uh, The Intention Imperative. Um, this fantastic book, Dare to Serve. These are right here, I'm reading them uh, daily, getting mentally fit to take on my day. So I take it on as a true, you know, leader. So I would say, number one, what you're listening to, be intentional, whether it's, you mentioned some of your listeners listen to it in exercise, in the car. Uh, Don't waste your days, feed your days, is what I say. That is excellent. So. We're going to wrap this podcast up for those that are watching on YouTube. 
We're going to bring up Steve's website for those that are listening. We'll include this in the show notes, but it's stevegutzler.com. Pretty easy to remember that now that we know who our guest was. But Steve, if you will, tell the listeners what they can find at this website and any other things you're offering at the moment. Yeah, well, we have three primary services in my company. One is the keynote speaking, and the vast majority of that, you know, is uh, virtual. So we do it from a downtown studio, uh, two high-definition cameras, great lighting, sound. We do the virtual programs with emotional intelligence and full potential are my two big keynote programs. Some of uh, our teams like the workshops, the interactive three hour to half day, full day workshops. And the third thing I do is executive coaching. I have uh, 25 to 30 executive coaching clients. So all of that content and then of course the book information I've, I've published two uh, best-selling books, that's on the website. But um, yeah, and then connect on Twitter, uh, IG, uh, at Steve Gutzler. I'd love, I've got 140,000 followers on Twitter. We're very active. We do a, a blog post every single week um, that people can sign up for. So, but man, I want to thank you for being a voice of success. I mean, people need what you do, Brian. So thank you for having me. Well, Steve, it was great to have you on the podcast today. And for the listeners, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. Do me a favor. Go over to wherever you're listening to this podcast on that platform. Leave us an honest rating and review. If you will, check out our website, buildcs.net. Send me an email, brianb at buildcs.net. I'd love to hear from you. Give me some ideas how to improve and what you enjoyed from the show. Also, share this podcast with others. I know Steve has dropped some nuggets. And do the one thing that you decided that as he was speaking that you should do as a result of listening to this podcast. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Remember to build yourself and build others.